What's up YouTube? Welcome back to another edition of Coding with Robbie. As always, I'm your host Robbie, and in today's video, we're going to be setting up a Next.js authentication system. And we're going to be doing so with COBOL. So COBOL is a all-in-one solution for authentication, payments, uh, permissions, all kinds of stuff. And it basically plugs right into Next.js, so you can get this thing up and running in a matter of minutes instead of days. So if that sounds good, make sure to like, subscribe, leave a comment, and uh, we'll get right into it. Let's go. All right, so before we can do anything, we're going to need a Next.js app. So I'm on their installation page right here, and I'm going to run the npx create next app at latest command. I'm going to copy that. I'll go to my terminal. I'm located on the desktop folder, and I'm just going to run the command. And for project name, I'll go auth. I want TypeScript, no ESLint. I do want Tailwind. I do want source. I do want app router, and I'm not going to change the default alias. So once that finishes, we can CD into that folder. So CD and then your project name. And then I'm going to open it in VS Code with code dot. So here's all the files that Next.js generated for us. So now we're going to run our app to verify that it works. So let's go back to terminal and I'm going to run npm run dev. And this is going to run our app on localhost 3000. So let's copy that URL. We'll go to our browser and we will just go to that URL to verify it's working. We're all good to go. So now we're ready to sign up for COBOL. So let's go to their website and I'll just click getting started right here. And you can just enter your email and I'll sign in. This is gonna email you a link. So I'll go to my Gmail. I got the link right here. I'll go sign in. And there we go. You just have to fill out a little bit of info. So, so let's continue. And now we have to create a COBOL project. So I'll name mine coding with Robbie. Create project. And there we go, we're in. We're now inside of the COBOL dashboard, so we're ready to use their system. All right, so now we're gonna jump over to COBOL's Next.js Getting Started Guide. So I got that pulled up right over here. And if we scroll down a little bit, we created an app, and now we're gonna install their library. So let's copy this command right here. We'll go back to terminal. I'm gonna open up a new folder. I'm still within my app directory, and I'm gonna run that command. I'm just gonna install the COBOL IO slash next library. So there we go, we got it. Let's go back to their guide, come down a little bit. So the next thing we have to set up is middleware and they give us some example code right here. So let's copy it and then we'll go back to VS Code and we're gonna create a middleware file within the source directory. So I'll go a new file, call it middleware.ts, paste in the code. And then the only part we're gonna have to configure right here is the public routes. So if we have more routes that are unauthenticated, we can add the URLs right here. But for now, I'll just leave it as the root route. Let's go back to the docs, scroll down a little bit further, and now we have to set up the COBOL provider. So basically, we just go to our layout file and just wrap everything in this COBOL provider. So let's do that. We could copy all this code, but we'll just do it in our file. So let's go back. We'll go to layout right here. Come down, we're gonna go within body, and I'll just start typing COBOL provider. It's gonna suggest the import. And then we just wrap children in that. So there we go, we got all that set up. And then coming down a little bit further, we have to add our environment variables now. So we don't have any of these yet, so we're gonna go ahead and get that from the COBOL dashboard. So let's go to our dashboard, and we're gonna go to applications on the left here, and we're gonna create an application. So create new application, I'll call mine coding with Robbie. I'll leave the logo blank, and we have to add a redirect URI. So let's go HTTP colon slash slash localhost 3000 slash callback, I'll hit add, and then I'm gonna save the application. So this just created an application for us, and now we have all the details we're gonna need for that environment variables file. So let's go back to their quick start guide, copy the file right here. Let's go to our Next.js app, and we'll go to the root directory, and we're gonna create a .env uh, file. Paste in the code we copied, and now we can fill this in with our details. So let's go back to the browser, go to our application, the domain URL is going to be this guy right here, so let's copy it. We'll go to domain, paste it in. We're going to need the client ID, so we can get that right here. Let's copy it. Paste it in. And then we're going to need our client secret, so let's go back once more. Copy it from right here. And then our callback URL is actually in place already, so we'll leave that as is. Let's hit save. And then let's make sure our website is still working. So let's go over here to localhost 3000. I'll refresh and we still get the Next.js page. So we have everything set up correctly. 
All right, so we got our environment variable set up. So now let's head back to the dashboard and we're gonna configure our authentication methods. So you can do that by going to authentication right here. And everything's disabled by default. So let's enable the magic link. This is where it emails you a link to log in. I'll just go enabled, save. And then I'll go back and we'll try one of these OAuth providers too. Let's try GitHub. And you're just gonna have to enter your GitHub client ID and client secret. So to get that, you can go to GitHub, you go to settings, and then you scroll to the bottom here, go to developer settings. And we're gonna create a new GitHub OAuth app. So let's go to OAuth, register new application. We'll call this coding with Robbie. For homepage URL, we'll just go localhost 3000. App description, I'll leave it blank. And then we need this callback URL and we have to get this from COBOL. So let's go back to our project. And here it is right here, so we'll copy it. Go back here, paste it in, and hit register application. And now we got our client ID and client secret that we can enter into COBOL. So let's copy the client ID. And I'll go back, paste it in right here. And then we need the client secret, which is right here. Let's create a new one. And I'll copy it and paste it in. And I'll enable this integration, hit save, go back. And now we got magic link enabled and we got uh, GitHub OAuth enabled. So now we're ready to add the components to our Next.js app. All right, so we got everything configured. We got our authentication method set up and now we can just use the SDK. So let's get started by adding some login and log out buttons. So let's go back to our app code and I'm just gonna clear out all the CSS that they start us out with. So I'll just delete all of this. And then I'm gonna to go to the home page, which is page.tsx, and I'll delete all the content that they start us out with. And I'll just replace that with an empty element. And then in here, we'll put an H1, and we'll just go coding with Robbie. And now we can add those login and log out buttons. So the first thing we wanna do is check if they're signed out or not. So we can use the signed out component. And now anything within here is only gonna show if they're signed out. So if they are signed out, we wanna show the login button. Then within here, we'll just do an A and uh, we'll go log in. And then we'll do the opposite if they're signed in. So let's go down here. We'll go signed in. If they are signed in, we wanna show the log out button. So let's go log out button. And then in here, we'll just do an A and we'll go log out. And we should have log in and log out now. So let's go ahead and try this out. We'll go back to the browser and we got our H1 and I'm currently signed out so I see the login button. So let's go ahead and click that. It's gonna take us to the login page. So I'll log in with uh, codingwithrobbie at gmail.com. Sign in. And it's gonna send that email. So this is the magic link uh, method. I'll go to my email, go to inbox. I have it right here. And now I can sign in. So I'll click the link to sign in right here. And it's gonna go, hey, you're about to log in. I'll click authorize. And there we go, I'm logged in. And now I have that log out button. So let's log out. All right, so we're logged out again. Now let's try the GitHub OAuth login method. So I'll go to login again. And down here is where we see those OAuth methods. So let's go with continue with GitHub. And now we're gonna get this authorized page on github.com. I'll authorize myself. And it's gonna redirect us. And it's gonna go, hey, do you wanna log in here? I'll go, yes. And there we go, we're now logged in with our GitHub account instead of the magic link. So now let's create a protected page. So let's go back to our Next.js and we'll just create a new page. So I'll go in the app folder here and we'll just call this page protected. And inside of there, I'll create a page.tsx. And then inside of here, we'll go, you are logged in. And then we'll add a link to this page on our home page. So let's go back to page in the app folder. And if they are signed in, we'll link to it. So let's go link. href is gonna be slash protected. And then inside of here, we'll just go protected. And now if we're logged in, we should be able to get here. So let's try it out. So we'll go back and we got that link right here. I'll click it and it goes, hey, you're logged in. But now let's try it if we're logged out. So I'll log out and then I'll go to slash protected and it's not gonna work. It's gonna make me log in first. So I'll log in and now I can get to that page. So that's how you can protect your pages. And if we did wanna make this page public, remember you just go back to middleware and you would add that page right here. So if I did wanna make it available to everyone, I could put slash protected. But we don't wanna do that right now. So let's just leave it as the root path.
The next cool thing you can do with COBOL is plans and permissions. So let's go ahead and set that up. So we'll go to the monetization tab here on the left. And the first thing we have to do is connect our Stripe account. So let's go to Stripe settings and we're just gonna connect. And I already have a Stripe account, so I'm gonna use my existing one. And then once you're logged in, you can connect an account. I'm gonna go ahead and create a new one right now and I'm gonna skip through it because there's kind of some personal details. I just finished connecting Stripe and now we can add paid plans. So let's go back to our products over here and we're gonna create a new product. So I'll go add product. I'll call this one premium and it's gonna be a paid type. And for description, I'll leave that blank. Let's create the product. And now we're gonna get a little error right here. We have to add a price to it. So how do we create a price? Let's click into it and we'll create a price right here. So it's gonna be flat rate, monthly. We'll just make it cost $1. And uh, for tax, we'll make it inclusive, create the price. All right, so now we got our price connected and now we can add permissions to these different plans. So maybe if they're on premium, they have access to certain things. So let's set that up. We'll get a premium, come down here. And now we can add permissions to this plan. So let's create our first permission. So I gotta go create a new one. And we'll just call this one all access. Create permission. And now we can go back to our product, go to premium, and we're gonna add that permission. So let's go down here, assign permission, we'll add it, assign permission. All right, so we got our plan and permission all set up. So now let's add an upgrade button to our website. So let's go back to the documentation. And we're gonna use this pricing link component right here. So let's go ahead and copy this. We'll go back to our website, we'll go to the home page, And if they're signed in, we'll show a upgrade button right here. I'm gonna change mine to an A, I don't care about the class. And right here, I'll just call this upgrade. And I have to make sure to import that component. There we go. And then one quick correction. This actually returns an anchor tag already. So we kind of have an A within an A. So I'm actually gonna change this to a span. So that's my mistake. Let's go back and try it out. So we'll go to our website now. And I'll go back to the home page. We have this upgrade button, I'll click it. And now we can see those different plans that we have. So I'm gonna to subscribe to the premium plan and it's gonna pull up a Stripe payment page. So I'll go ahead and subscribe. And then it's gonna say, hey, thanks for your order. You're now a premium user. So let's go back to our website now. And now let's try out the other components that allow us to check if they have certain permissions. So we'll go back to the docs and now we have this is allowed and is forbidden. So it's super easy to use. You just wrap your content in is allowed and you put the permission that's required to access the content. So let's try it out. Let's go back to protected slash page.tsx. And maybe in here we have like a private video or something that's shown. So we'll go is allowed. And then uh, for permission, they have to have all access. And we'll put secret video in here. Now I should be able to see this because I'm a premium user. So let's go back. So let's go back to our website and I'll go to that protected page and it says, hey, you can see the secret video. All right, so now we're gonna log in with the other user which is not a premium user to verify that we can't see that secret video. So let's go log in again and I'll go change account. This time it's gonna be codingwithrobbie at gmail.com. I'll hit sign in. It's gonna email me the magic link. I'll go to my email. I got it right here. And I'm gonna click sign in. I'm gonna log us in, I'll go authorize. I'm logged in as the other user and now if I go to protected, we cannot see that secret video. So our permission system is working. And now let's check out some of the server side stuff we can do. So one thing you'll likely want is some information on the logged in user, say their email or their profile picture that you can display on your website. So to do that, they have some nice helper methods for us. So you can use this get auth method. It's gonna get a bunch of information on uh, the currently logged in user. And if we scroll down, they give an example right here. So let's try it out. So let's just copy this line right here and we'll go back to our code. I'm on the protected page and we're gonna make this an async function so it'll run on the server. And then we'll paste in that line we copied and make sure to import the function. And now this should grab a bunch of information on the logged in user. So let's console.log that. And then we'll go back to our protected page and refresh. And now if we go to terminal, we see a bunch of information on the user. So we can see, you know, their ID, their email address, their picture URL, if they had one, and whether they're verified or not. 
So that's how you can get information on your user and you just want to be careful not to, you know, do this stuff client side because there's stuff like the access token and refresh token and stuff that you really don't want to uh, and stuff that you really don't want to show client side. All right. And then one last thing I want to showcase in this video is the get access control helper. And this allows you to check permission server side. So we'll try this out with a server action. So let's go back to our home page and I'm just going to put a form here up at the top. And inside of that form, I'll just have a submit button. So type submit, I'll just hit put, I'll just put go within there. And now we're gonna create a function up here. So we'll go async function. I'll just call it hello. And this is gonna be a server action. So I'll put use server up here. And then we'll use that helper method in here. So let's go ahead and copy this stuff right here. I'll paste it in. So right here's the helper method. We have to make sure to import that. And then on this next line, we'll check if they have the permission and we call it ours all access. And then we'll just return that. So I'll return has permission and I'll also just console.log it so we can see it. So console.log has permission. And then we'll hook up this server action to our form right here. So let's just go action is equal to hello. And we should be good to go. So let's try this out. I'll go back to my website, refresh. We got that go button right here. I'll click go a bunch of times. And then if we go back to terminal we can go, Hey, you don't have permission for that. And that's because I'm logged in as the non-premium user. So yeah, that's kind of the basics of cobble. I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to like, subscribe, leave a comment. Let me know you're there and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.